grand final week. Looking forward to it. Uh, and I know that it's, it's, it, it's come up quickly. I know that we say this every year, but it feels like, you know, nearly yesterday we were talking about round one and, and early trends and all that kind of stuff. But two best teams left, uh, Sydney and Brisbane, and there's no real weaknesses here. We talked about this in the lead up as well, that, that both teams have sort of figured out what they need to be doing. We talked about it earlier in this podcast. But there are no real weaknesses. They're weaker in some areas compared to the other. And there are some slight style differences in how these teams play the game. Uh, but a lot of this balances out when you kind of weigh it up. So I guess it's a very broad question, but how do you see this playing out? Uh, yeah, you, probably that's the question I can't answer. And you go back to when they played round 19 Team, earlier yeah. this year. Two-point thriller. There's sort of a few things you can look at in that. But even in that game there, um, just looking at some of the numbers in round 19, Brisbane won contested possessions by plus two. Sydney won uncontested possessions by plus two. So even down in possessions in the end. And the margin was plus two to yeah. the Lions. And when, when they <laughs> were you scoring. Sound like Hamish. <laughs> yeah, so when they were scoring, the Lions scored three more points from back half than the Swans did from back half chain. So Brisbane was plus three from that zone. Sydney was plus three from points scored from forward half zone. So mm. yeah, ended up even on the scoreboard. The two points differential is comes from your third zone, which is centre bounces. So being able to walk straight out of the centre bounce, that was the difference. So even looking at that game, there wasn't one area that one team did better than the other. Um, and if they were, they were offset by the contrasting yeah. area. But in terms of coming into this game, contested ball, differential, Brisbane's first, Sydney's 15th. Yeah. So that is one area where Sydney has been able to get to the grand final, been on top of the ladder the whole year without relying on winning that contested possession, uh, the contested possession game. So ground ball gets, Brisbane second, Sydney 15th. Loose ball gets, which is we've spoken about, is a lot more off spoils and sort of their, the ball's up for grabs, but it's more in space. Brisbane's third and Sydney's 17th. So looking at that, I wouldn't say it's a huge weakness for Sydney because obviously they've got to a grand final, but I look at this stat and say to people, if you're watching in early the, the game early on, you're trying to figure out if someone's getting the jump on the other, if Sydney finish even or ahead in contested possessions early in the game, Brisbane are probably not getting it on their terms because Brisbane are usually the ones that are at least mm. getting the ball. So you're not so, going to be panicking if the Lions are plus Yes, yeah, there's two ways to look at it. If you're positions. Sydney and you're losing contested possessions, don't worry too much about yeah. it. But if you're Brisbane and Sydney start to get on top of the contested possession, start to maybe worry slightly because it's, it's sort of going yeah, out. That's their one wood. <laughs> and, yeah. Well, it's also been that Sydney have been able to beat teams without being first of the ball. Yep. Imagine if they are first of the ball yep. continuously, they're going to get even better. Uh, where the ball's played, so time in forward half. Again, Brisbane's got the territory game here. Brisbane's second uh, best time in forward half team, Sydney 12th. Creating a forward half stoppage. Brisbane have the most forward half stoppages um, in their part of the ground. Sydney 16th. So Sydney mm. likes to keep their forward line open. Goes back to that offensive efficiency though. So the ball lives in Brisbane's forward half. They score 86 points for every 56 50, for every 50 minutes, minutes. It's in their forward half, forward half. So it's about competition average. For every 50 minutes, it's in the Swans forward half. They're at 100 points per game. So they'll get it in there quickly and score fast. So the Swans will be happy to sit back, yep. play a back half game, yep. and, and move and it that way. And keep their forward line open. So we, yeah, we talked earlier in the year on this podcast about how to beat Sydney and the teams that were doing it, and we found that the common theme was was uncontested marks, just stretching the field, making sure and, like, and picking picking the part because yep. the Swans will want to sort of go sort of go in waves forward, but but then be picked apart on the way back. Mm. And that is something that Brisbane really can quite can do well when it is on their terms. Yeah. So. Probably swing into the chaos and control in grand final. So both teams come in. Brisbane, more of a control team, prefer to take more marks. Swans themselves don't mind which way they play, but they want to make the opposition a chaos team. They don't like their opposition being a control team. They need mm. their opposition to keep going in the chaos. So how do you do that then? So you so that means you have to you have to adjust a lot based on who you're playing. Yeah, so a lot of probably a quick and dirty, easy way to say to limit marks is to go man on man. Don't allow, if you play a lot more zone, you're going to allow a lot more marks because it's like, I'm they zoning here, space, yeah. I'm going to let you take a mark yeah. on the boundary. It's, mm. it's Sydney a complete opposite. Like, just yeah. don't let them take a mark anyway. Go man on man and, and, and you know, half that contest, as I said, they're not the best contested possession team, so it's not like they're continuously winning those contests, but it's just like, don't make the opposition get easy possessions marks, all the way yeah. up. Um, even if they're sort of out wide on the boundary line, they're still valuable because they still give you another five or 10 seconds to find that next, shot, yeah. next option. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you look at grand finals themselves. Um, so home and away season, uh, you get 49% of games are controlled games. So more marks are taken. 51% of games, there's more ground balls. So 51-49 split in terms of chaos and control. In grand finals, only three of the past 16 have been controlled games. Yeah. So you need to bring the chaos in grand finals. Um, 
But then you look at sort of, as I said, with Sydney, um, when they've conceded chaos, they're eight wins and one loss this year. So when they've made their opposition win yeah. more ground ball than marks. So they'll really be want to, wanting to avoid allowing the Brisbane Lions to well, take these easy, uncontested yeah. marks. Yeah, so it looks like the chaos game was going to come in a grand final and Sydney's like, good. Great. We love forcing that to cha into chaos. But if the Lions can somehow get it onto their yep. turn, then one of the, that. One of the three grand finals that was controlled was last year's grand final against Collingwood, which was very much Brisbane were right in that game because it was a controlled grand final. It was one of the greatest grand finals to watch. But it was. It was very much structured. Both teams were able to pick, pick the game apart. So with Sydney, when their opposition um, has had control, so has taken more marks than ground balls, they're seven wins and five losses this year. So still, mm. still a winning record against yep. those teams, but they want the opposition to be chaos. in chaos. Yeah. Brisbane going the other way. Um, so Brisbane themselves, if they've played with chaos this year, so they've won more ground balls than marks, they're two wins, three losses and a draw. So they don't, they don't like chaos at all. When they've, when they've played with control, they're 15 wins and five losses. So, yeah, interesting thing to look for. But, yeah, look Very for, different stylistically, Look for the, the Lions will want to make this as much of, you know, unlike all the other grand finals, but by taking it, you know, a lot more control, whereas Sydney will be happy to say, OK, let's play like all the other grand finals. Let's just get the ball onto the ground and go contest after contest after contest. Um, so, so, yeah, that, it, it'll that, be interesting. Does that favour that? Is that a clear... Well, no, as I said, Brisbane have been Brisbane is such a good control team and they were able to control last year. I know they didn't get the flag result in the end, but I, they were, as I said, they were already yeah. 12 months result removed from having a control grand final. I think they can do that again. Um, but yeah, that, that'll be a big part to watch, that if, if the ball is continuously getting to a lot more ground ball gets, it's probably going to mean that Brisbane's going to mm. be you know, less favoured to win. There were stages of the Cats game and the second half of the Giants game when they mounted that comeback, where it did feel like nah, it so was... second half of the Cats game was complete control. So the chaos that you're seeing in the Brisbane-Geelong game was them the handballing. Handball. Speed, yeah. But it was still it was control, it was still uncontested, it was still maintained possession. And that's why only two weeks against, against the Giants, it was a very much chaos game, and Brisbane came from 44 points down yeah. chaotically so they and can, won that game. They so they can, can do it. Yeah. And, that's yeah. why, and that's why it comes down to these teams are in the grand final for a reason. Yeah. There's no way that you can just go... One if the game beat, is this yeah. way, we beat them. It's if the game goes this way, they're less likely to win, mm. but they can still win in, in both terms of the games and both teams can do it's it. Fascinating stuff. I think it's it's probably the matchup. I'm really looking forward to the matchup and, and, and who wins the tactical battle and who can get on top early. And, and, and I know that the Lions have come back, but they probably don't want to do that in the grand final. We've seen that the Swans can kick accurately at the start of the game and Lions have had their accuracy issues. There's we've just a lot seen, yeah. of play. We've also seen Sydney start games really, really slow. We have, so. yes. Um... I, the potential change. Well, go on. Sorry. I was going to say. I think for me, like the, my when I, when I look at the two teams, I think where can where can one team have a significant advantage? Where can the difference sort of be? And I think it's no surprise that my, I sort of am focusing in on um, on the star players and on the midfielders. And I think that's where Sydney has a huge advantage. And their three gun midfielders, Isaac Heaney, Chad Warner, and Errol Goulden, the goals they get from these guys, like it's extraordinary the, the goal production they get out of their three star players. 82 goals they've combined for this year. 82 goals for three midfielders? That's extraordinary. That's 3.28 on average per game. Um, by contrast, Neil McCluggage, Dunkley, Ashcroft and Berry have 44 combined. So like half. And that's, you know, three extra players. Yeah, so um, that's, that's what they're getting. In games that they've, those three have combined for three goals, Sydney's 15 and 2. This year, when they don't, they're four and four. So it's it's when they get because you they're getting got they they get goals from a lot of players. A lot of players they have have the ability to kick two, three. We've seen it. I don't know who I would imagine if I had to guess, Sydney has the most players that have kicked kicked three or more. In well, the, one of the stats year. I came across last year that sort of goes into this is like, well, is it because their midfields are going and spending time forward? It's like, well, no, it's they've not, actually, no. they've kicked, I think before last week, they had kicked 52 goals from outside 50, which was 19 more than any other team. Mm. Um, and a total of 15% of their goals came from outside 50. Yeah. Comp average is 7%. So yeah. just they've been able what to kick What was that, kick that stat again ways. when they kick goals and they win? They win They're 15 and two when those three players Combine for three goals or more, and, game. and nine and one if they combine for four or more. Mm. So that's very interesting because I think that the drawback about the Swans, if you look at both of these teams head to head, is probably the key forwards and the consistency of the output yep. of, of the likes of Amadi and, and McDonald, who, who tweaked his ankle late in that game. Yeah. And McLean. but are all capable of, of 
Yes, but 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 the Swans, I don't want to say rely on, but they do need a lot of the time those midfielders to perform. Yeah. And so if the Lions put time into these guys and really restrict them and from having scoreboard impact. Yeah. But it's not just the goals they kick themselves, right? So it's 82 that they've combined for this year. They've also had 68 direct goal assists. Not not score assists, not score involvements, direct goal assists. So that so 82 plus 68 is 150. 150 <laughs> Goals have been sc- for Sydney this year have been scored or directly assisted by one of those three players. They've they've the teams kicked three hundred and fifty five. It's a massive percentage for three midfielders. That is crazy. So yeah. you, you're right. I think a lot of it clearly goes through them. Um, and if if we're getting just off the top of my head, that's about five five and a half goals per game that they're getting that they're either kicking or assisting. Um, I think if they get that production just in the grand finals, I think they're going to win. Who's the guy that they need to stop the Lions? I think the guy they need to try and stop, what should be looking to stop first, is Goulden. I think Goulden is the the easiest to stop is probably the, a bit unfair, but because more of his ball comes on the outside, it generally, the, it, what we've seen in the past, it's generally easier to stop those players. I think it's harder to stop Heaney and Warner. I think you've got to back... Your your mids to go head to head. I think they would put. If I was, I would be putting someone on Goulden on a wing, and I mm. think you probably get put depending on what Dunkley, they do with Dunkley yeah. and with the rucking and stuff like that. But I think the Dunkley would be a, is a good matchup for someone like Isaac Heaney. Dunkley had Heaney last time in round nineteen. Round nineteen, you speak about the goals and the goals assist stuff. Round nineteen was the only game this year where Heaney didn't kick a goal or have a score assist in that game, and Dunkley basically had him for seventy percent of the game. Uh, Berry didn't really tag anyone in that game, but I reckon he he's played mm. on the wing as a sort of a yep. defensive wingman, so he's probably the one. That we what about the other way? Who's the most important player to stop if the Swans are looking at the Lions? Oh, it's clearly Lockie Neal, I think. Would be Dane Zorko? In no, fact, it's, he's it's, had no good see, that's where I go to Dane Zorko. Lockie Neal, yes, very, very important, but Dane Zorko in terms of the ball movement and the setup and things yeah. of that, similar to the Golden one, I think he's easier to sit on as well. Um, Brisbane the, can't the greatest, win this game if Lockie Neal doesn't, well, doesn't Well, one of the biggest play. mistakes, I think, of the finals so far is Carlton not selecting someone with Dane Zorko in mind. Should have selected someone just for that matchup of Zane Zorko. I think with Sydney, yeah, it, it'll probably be James Jordan to start with, um, who's done a lot of those sort of half-forward roles. But, yeah, I think he's the most important one because Brisbane just gets so much sort of... Um, relief out of him and his ball movement, even yep. if it's not always going to be on the scoreboard. It's like, okay, at least Zorko got it, and he got it 60 metres away from yeah. goal and, yeah. and out into space. So Interesting stuff. Yeah, no, I, I don't disagree necessarily with that. I just think I, I don't see a way Brisbane win if Lockie Neal finishes the game with 20 disposals and four clearances. I think he has to go big if they're going to win because we just we know what Sydney's mids are going to do. Uh, a couple of potential changes. So Oscar McInerney we talked about, but... Um, the question is whether you bring in the like-for-like like replacement or you look elsewhere. And, and I'm sure Fagan will say one thing, but maybe have an idea up his sleeve or the other. You don't want to give away all your secrets Do, early in the week. But Are we, are so, we completely 100% putting a line through McInerney? Yeah. What, do you give him a 1%, are you reckon, 5%, 0 what, what are you actually... 1% I, chance? I think, I think I've teams already are, started... I've st- I do previews now. I've already started writing stuff about Darcy Ford. Yeah. So I've sort of... Teams, are, much, teams will be gun-shy no after idea, Horse but, yeah. uh, and, and the Sam Reid exper- experiment in 2022. Yeah. So I think it's, it's Fort... Or they stick with a sort of a Danaher Dunkley Hipwood hybrid, but I think they've got to bring in Fort. Yeah. You, 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 like if you've had the ruck all year, you've had that set up all year, and I know that you can adjust, but you don't want to have to do that and rely so on that in the last I've, game of the I've year. Used, I've used this term a few times: blessing in disguise, and we're, it's probably a theme of ours throughout the year. There's a lot of but teams. But it's the other team responding interest. to your response well, to the. the well, cat- that's why this yeah. could be a blessing in disguise. Oscar McInerney, great ruckman, and 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 they do flick it around with men putting Danaher in the ruck. When Dan Hur goes in the ruck, McInerney goes to the bench because he's got no forward craft at all. Darcy Ford's actually got a little bit of forward craft. So he's got that. I know it's it's only one game that he just has to come out and out of the box. But I would, you know, I'd bank, I'd find it easier to bank two goals next to Darcy Ford's name than you would for Oscar McInerney. So that ability to actually go into, change with Dan Hur and go into Dan Hur's position mm. might just give him that extra little bit, you know. I, I don't think you mm. can do it as a whole for a whole year, but just for one grand final day, I think a couple of goals from Darcy Fort could be the difference. Uh, Swans, we said Logan McDonald spent the end of the game with his uh, ankle in ice, looked a bit worse for wear as he was coming off for that as well. Would they recall Taylor Adams? Would they recall Callum Mills off a couple of weeks for a hamstring? I mean, talk about Mills gun shy, I think. Callum Mills, Mills. Uh, Sam Reid, I think, has killed Callum Mills' chance. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, so you'd probably go in unchanged if that's the case? I think so. I, I mean, I haven't looked or, or heard anything about McDonald in the last 24 hours, but I I think he was training towards playing, playing. if, if uh, what I initially Looks saw was very correct. minor, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think they will be making any changes unless something happens later in the week. But <sighs> Taylor Adams, two grand finals in a row. Yeah, I just don't think I just don't know what what the spot is. Where where do you find a spot for Taylor Adams in that team? Um, I think Callum Mills definitely would be playing, but you just can't you just can't you just can't risk it. I mean, who's on the fringe? Someone like maybe Braden Campbell, who's been sub as well it's at different times. Um, Jordan, but he'll probably have a role. They've uh, just been more mainstays in the team. Yeah, no, I've been, yeah. Uh, you you settle Joel with Lombard, team balance. Yeah. is very, very good at just backing in them. Yeah, they're the not going to just. They're not going to take one of those guys out to bring Taylor Adams in at the eleventh hour. A tip and a margin, Jake. We're getting to the pointy end here. Yeah, <laughs> I've got a feeling I I might uh, change this about four minutes before the <laughs> bounce, but I've got a feeling Brisbane's going to win. I really do, but I don't know if I can. I don't know if I'm brave enough to tip them. <laughs> I really got a feeling they're going to win. Well, you're going like a, one point either way. We'll, we'll give you a bit. Can I go with draw? <laughs> you can't go with draw because I'll keep playing. Um, ah, stuff it. I'll go with Brisbane. How many I'm going to go with Brisbane. I'm going to go Brisbane by five points. I just, I don't know. There's something about that game against the Giants where everything was dead. They were gone. And it'll be, and that moment will, be, I just feel like that'll be the moment we look back on and it'll be almost the screenshot of that. Uh, was it Lockie Ash that kicked the goal that put him up by 44 points, <laughs> yeah. 80 to 36 or something? And it's like, what chance did you give him to win the premiership at that point? And I just feel like it's so many, so many things. Having lost last year, uh, I don't believe in serendipitous sort of things, but I don't. I just feel like it's trending towards one of those years where everything just sort of works out. And I, I don't know. I just think Brisbane, they're capable of doing it. They really are. Sydney's best. Uh, and Brisbane's best. I think Rowan, Rowan Connolly was made the point that if they both play to their best, there's no reason Brisbane can't beat them. Uh, Christian, a winner and a margin. Yeah, Brisbane by seven. We're right. all going to go Brisbane. Well, that's yeah. You Brisbane as well. Oh, Brisbane, yeah. <laughs> I, but I, I thought I Brisbane thought I gonna... coming into the pot, I had an inkling about the Lions. I just right. think I just think their ability to when they control the the tempo of the footy and. and and if they're, if they're able to do that, I think they win. And they've shown they can do that in a grand final and almost win. I don't know. I just, I, I like the Lions Gee. as well. Gee, I mean, would I be surprised if Sydney won? Oh, Absolutely yeah. it's, not. It's a 50 Would I be you know, yeah. happy, you know, quote unquote? Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, flip a coin for these two. But I think yeah, it's going to be close, though. I think it's yeah. going to be close. I was right last week. I thought the, I thought the first game was going to be not close. It wasn't going to be close, and I thought the second one would be. And I think this one will be close too. Hope so. I can't see this one. I think it'll be. This will be twenty within twenty, one way or the other. Um, but definitely, you can make cases for both. I guess the other question is Norm Smith medal. Oh yeah, I hadn't thought about that. Uh, I did sort of say that if it was to be someone, it, it'd be oh, for, for Brisbane. It would be like a Cal Archie or a Cam Rayner who has a cameo with three and and, and has a, a mm. has a quarter that just lifts them up. Yeah. Um, and if it's Sydney, I mean, it's a good question. Probably you're probably banking on one of those three that you mentioned. Oh, you'd be Errol, stunned Warner if, and if Goulden, Sydney but... won and one of those three guys didn't win it. It'd be Tom Papley'd have to kick six, I think. Yeah. Um, I, I'm gonna. Yeah, I think. I mean, you could go the obvious ones, Neil or Zorko. Danaher. I'm gonna go with Danaher. Yeah. yeah I'm Danaher going with. I'm going with. Joe. I'm going for more of a barracking one. I don't know who's going to win it. I would love Will Ashcroft to win it. I just Ooh. think he's been great for the last eight or nine weeks and he's just been forgotten about of how much of a superstar this kid is for superstar. year two. Year two. You got him in the superstar camp? I've got him in the superstar <laughs> camp. Fuck, it's who are you early. kicking out? No, no, no. Give me Cam Rayner. Two games in a row, he'll back it up. He'll, yeah. uh, he'll, I can't he'll believe we're all, um, we're all in Brisbane here. Just, yeah. just a couple of quick stats, if I can, from the grand final. Just wanted to look at, if you're leading at quarter time, half time, three quarter yeah. time in previous <laughs> grand finals. So leading at quarter time, 17 wins, seven losses. Great. So he's still a chance yeah. to come back. Leading at half time, 16 wins, eight losses. So you More can chance. come back from half time. Lead at three quarter time, 22 wins, one loss. Uh, so Geelong 2009 was the only team to come back from a three quarter time deficit to win. Um, any of the past sort of 24 grand finals. Um, and then I sort of started looking at so if you win the toss. So turn your TV off at three-quarter time. Is well, yeah, maybe. Um, and then sort of looked at if you win the toss and do you win the game, nothing much in it. But I just looked at kicking left. So we always look at the MCG or yeah. wherever they played, even the Gabba. But if you kick left to start southern, the grand final, stand in. 11 wins and 11 losses. <laughs> There's nothing in it. So <laughs> if you win the toss and which way you kick, doesn't matter. Yeah, I thought that yeah. was going to be a bit more emphatic, but there you go. 